This week on Project UX, we're going to look at Startup BXTEL. They offer a hearing aid solution using a smartphone app and a pair of headphones. And their key UX issue is that of accessibility. The UX experts really dive into this topic because creating a product that is accessible and visually easy to understand, particularly for an older demographic, is critical to their success. There's a lot of great UX content covered in this episode, so we hope you enjoy. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Ben Tyler. I'm the founder of Bextel, and we make apps for hearing. Uh, about me, uh, I've had many hearing problems because I've had some injuries to my ears. I've had both my eardrums reconstructed, and as a result, I've experienced some things like tinnitus and hearing loss. And hearing loss is a thing that's very common among Americans. Millions of other Americans have experienced hearing loss. And the solutions for this are kind of clunky and very expensive. So what can I do to solve this? Well, we've made some apps that can help, um, help people hear better and help with their tinnitus. And specifically, I'm going to talk about my hearing aid app, which turns your iPhone into a hearing aid. When the app first comes up, uh, it starts off with an app tour. And it's very simple, it just kind of walks people through the app, explains it. Uh, I think the main audience for my app will be kind of older people. Uh, and so they probably need their hand held a little bit. So we're, basically the app will um, evaluate your hearing by giving you a test. And I'll press next here a few times. And then uh, after the hearing test is done, it'll use that to calibrate the hearing aid. So you can either hold it in your hand or put it on a table. And uh, basically, you'll, put it, you'll point it towards where you want to hear, and then you'll have an earphone in or two earphones in, and you'll hear uh, the live sound. And then it goes from, directly from the uh, walkthrough to the hearing test. Plug in your, your headphones, no problem. Adjust volume to 50%, so it's kind of somewhat calibrated. I can't do that with a the, with the demo, but that's okay. You would adjust the volume to 75%. Go to a quiet room. This is a nice quiet room right here. And then, if you've ever taken a hearing test before, it's like a, a series of beeps at different frequencies. So you'll be able to hear, uh, determine like, how good your, uh, your hearing is at local frequencies and high frequencies. And let's say, um, I have to like press these buttons up and down until I can just barely hear the beeps. Now, you can't hear, the, hear them right now because they're coming through the headphones. And I'll fast forward just a little bit. So it goes through a bunch of standard uh, frequencies that you'd take during a, an, uh, an audio, audio test. And it goes from the left ear to the right ear. And we're approaching towards the end here. And let's just say I've got really bad hearing at, at this frequency. So I've got some high frequency hearing loss here. So at the end here, you can kind of see um, your right ear and left ear, and um, uh, the left ear is some really bad high frequency loss. And then really, this is uh, for people who are maybe not so technology, uh, technology savvy, so I just walk them through the whole thing. You press next again, and it goes to the main screen, and basically all you got to do is plug in your headphones into your ears, press this on button, and you're ready to go, and then it starts uh, uh, acting as a hearing aid for you. And there's some other features here too. Um, there's a help uh, screen, settings screen. So you can kind of, you can go to your, directly to your hearing results and then you can uh, make some other fine adjustments to uh, how the app works. And then if you really want your, your doctor, your audiologist to um, fine tune this for you, you can have them go in and adjust all the uh, gains at different frequencies for you. And that's about it. I think this is awesome. I think that you're solving an actual problem unlike a lot of apps. Like we don't need any more check-in apps, we don't need any more photo apps. But like this is like a real issue that people have and I think that's great. Um, my one suggestion I would have is that in your onboarding, um, have some type of progress indicator so I know if I'm almost done or not. Okay. You mentioned elderly people might be using this more often or not, but then I got the sense that, I don't know, I mean, have you put this in the hands of elderly people and then not shown them how to use it to see if they can get through it or? Yeah, it, it, I've had mixed results. Okay. Um, because you're using some odd patterns, like in the, I saw blue links in some places, even the, the volume up and down, it doesn't really say up or down, right? And there's, you know, yeah. maybe a slider actually might I be. I probably need to actually have up the, the text Yeah, up everything and down. needs to be really apparent and everything yeah, needs to be needs, really obvious. I know obvious I need to make it as or, obvious as possible. Yeah. yeah. So. And I think with your onboarding too, it, it seems so authoritarian. It's just like, do this, do this, do this, but it never says why. So I think just, Friendly, making it a little bit friendlier might help because I think someone that might be using this might be 
possibly, I don't know, self-conscious about that. So that could be something to help kind of ease them into using an application like this. Um, also, I think, I think that along with the whole UI controls, I would be very cautious about using a slider, especially if you think your audience is older people because it, the hands aren't quite as steady. Sure. So consider an alternative, like especially on that screen which has the fine tune, you know, where you can fine tune adjust. Yeah. On that, you have sliders, and so those are really tricky to fine tune. Yeah, and I kind of glossed over this, but I had a pop up saying that basically you don't need to adjust these things yourself. You should only have your audiologist uh, adjust these or adjust them yourself if you're proficient with. Uh, with uh, audiology, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. So. I mean, don't, I wouldn't be afraid to give your per, your application a personality, right, and, and a voice, and, and so like it could it could say that, right? It could oh, say okay. like, hey, you you know, hey, you guys don't need to touch this. Like, we have this handled. If you want your doctor to look at it, like, show this to them. Uh, I mean, it's it's okay to give apps personality, right? That's okay. fine. So you mentioned pointing the phone, right? Like, and how do they know which? Is, so is that where? And actually, don't even know because yeah, because so the mic isn't the mic at the bottom of the phone. Yeah, it, okay. It is. So you, you'd use you'd have to point the bottom of the, of the okay. iPhone towards. So you want to put an right? arrow on there or something because yeah, uh, that's a great idea too. Because I, yeah, I wouldn't know which way to point. And I felt like one of your screens had the top of it pointed at the. Maybe I, I miss I saw that. <laughs> I might have had some uh, some old app art in there. Yeah. Possibly. I'll, Plus, I'll obviously, the that. phone's changed, and like the that phone button is actually not the same as a button. That's right. On there. <laughs> I think uh, the iPhone four yeah. um, uh, headphone jack was at different places yeah. on the top. So yeah. that, that changes with every yeah. iPhone iteration. I mean, w w yeah. With that demographic, you might have to be very literal, right? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So because we're talking about like an accessibility thing here, so on this page right now, there's what two actions: power and the on off. Yeah, this is, I, I realize I could have done this better. The power actually means uh, background mode. So if you were to press the home button or lock the screen, it would still play audio in the background. Okay. And if you turn this off, then uh, if you, when you press home, then the application will terminate. So just hitting home doesn't get rid of the app unless you slide the yeah, power. Yeah, it'll stay on until you slide the power. If it's, if it's power on, then you can use multiple applications at the same time and still hear from this application. So to me, this whole page needs to be your on button. Like I really want to press that circle in the middle. Like I don't need this little slider that says power on or off. If you click that, then you can have that change colors or give me the feedback that hey, this is on and will be on. So even then too, if I'm doing like task switching or something like that, I can see that color and I know whether or not it's on or off without having to dive into the app. Okay. Without trying to figure out like, if it's left on off and I turn it on, does that mean the off toggle is back on? Like, because that's the issues you're going to have right now. Yeah, the the the, um, the text will actually change when you when you actually toggle it. But even the whole idea around background mode, like I think that's probably lost on a lot of people. So I think yeah, it's the, either on or off, or maybe I don't even know. Do you even ping them every so often to say like, hey, I'm still using your battery, or, or you know, like if you notice it going below a certain. Uh, percentage. Yeah, that's kind of the dilemma I had. Uh, how to do both turn on the app, like make the sound. Uh, start and whether you should have it in background mode too. Yeah. And then also like so like you have this last calibrated. I mean, do people calibrate their ears often? Is that something that happens, or is that like a one time and probably not for a I while? I think for most people it would be a one time thing, but maybe somebody would want to recalibrate six months later. Mm -hmm. Then in that case, like it, to me, that's unnecessary on your home screen, right? Because that's more of just in my profile in the settings. If I'm like, wait, I think my hearing has changed. Let me go in and recalibrate. But right now it's a little confusing that it's saying hey last calibrated because it makes me think that I need to recalibrate. Okay. Or maybe have a reminder pop up periodically. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, again, just kind of knowing your audience, right? And I think everything needs to be extremely obvious. Uh, again, things like placing arrows in the direction of the phone even, I think it would help with usability. Again, it's a great idea and you're, in, and you're helping potentially a lot of people, so that's great. Yeah, so if you're dealing with accessibility, make this more accessible by having bigger buttons, less sliders and more, you know, tapping in, or typing in numbers. Um, but overall, I think you're solving a really cool problem. I think your idea is great. Um, I think you do have a lot of uh, animations right now, or illustrations right now, and uh, if you could kind of keep going in that direction and add some personality and playfulness, this could be a really cool app. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the episode. We'd love to know what you think in the comments below, so like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. It means the world to us, and we'll be back soon with more UX content for you coming your way. Until next time.